you guys been? Sorry we're late. It was supposed to be forestry service. Couldn't you find something else to wear? Believe me, we didn't have any time. You got the warrant? Just the search warrant. All right, we'll see what we can find and then ask him a few questions. Let's go! All right, here we go. You guys ready? Yeah, go. Okay, we're coming down. Copy. Hello, anybody in there? This is the forestry service. We're doing a line survey. We think this property might be on national forest land.
bloom or the evidence. <laughs> you're both. You've got, uh, you've got the lab looking at the rest? No, this is it. An improvised explosive device. So what do we have? Well, the device was double wrapped in brown paper, most of which burned. No address or sender? No, burned. But this was intended to go off in the airplane. Hmm. A barometer? That was modified to function as an altimeter. So when the plane reaches a certain altitude, boom. Yeah, but not so much a boom, it was more like a thud, according to cabin attendants. Because apparently most of the gunpowder didn't explode, it just burned. The guy's an amateur. No, oh, but very clever one. Look, just look how well this thing is made. The hinges are handmade. Look at the trigger device made out of copper wire. And the serial numbers on the batteries were filed off so no one could trace them. And in this thing, he used barium nitrate, which has no explosive purpose. Just fireworks powder used to color the smoke green. Our guy spent a hell of a lot of time making this. Our? It's a postal case. Went through the mail. Now we have to figure it out and stop him. Stop him? Maybe this is it. Oh, no. No, he's too clever. His ego. Is that you? Oh, wow, Linda. <laughs> hey, what a surprise. <laughs> May I come in? Sure, I'm sorry. Um, yes, uh, so. Well, well, you're a long way from Union College. Oh, you heard? Yeah. Congratulations. Thanks. I'm really happy for you. Well, how about you? Any luck with uh, your writing, I mean? Ah, uh, a lot of encouraging letters from editors, but no checks. Oh, I always liked the way you wrote in school. I wish you were an editor. <laughs> How's your family? Mom and Dad are doing okay. And Ted? Ted? Boy, he's living in a cabin in Montana. Oh, you ought to see it. Remember when we used to call you Henry David Kaczynski? <laughs> <laughs> the Thoreau kid, huh? <laughs> Those the good old days. I'm going to be in town till Monday if, uh, if you're free. Oh, I'd love to. I, mean, I really would. But I can't this weekend. Oh, I understand. I probably should be going. Uh, wait, um, look, would you mind if I gave you a call or something? I mean, you know, if we get together. David, I, I didn't just happen to pass by. Oh. <laughs> I'm staying at my aunt's. Well, I'll call you Sunday. Good. Bye. Bye. So the university safety department handled both of them? No. We notified the Evanston police. They, they did the lab work. This was the first one? Last year, May 25th. It was found in the parking lot of the University of Illinois in Chicago. It was addressed to Professor Christ? No. No? N no, he was supposedly the sender. Uh, the addressee is. Oh, that guy. When it was returned to Professor Christ, he claimed it didn't recognize the handwriting. He authorized one of our men to open it. And? Uh, as you can see, the, the fuse only ignited three of the match heads, and the gunpowder in the pipe didn't blow. That's lucky for your officer. Burned hand. But all three bombs could have been made out of material you'd find in any ordinary garage in America. Yeah, making it tough to trace. But he's revealing his personality. There's a signature to each bomb. It's wood. I don't see the connection. He even went so far as to tape these little wooden twigs on the interior so we'd know it was him.
Mr. Wood. I am sending copies of this book, Ice Brothers, by Sloan Wilson, to a number of prominent people in the Chicago area, because I believe this to be truly a book for our time, a book that should be read by all who make important decisions affecting the public welfare. Like people who run major airlines. When did Wood get this letter? It was Tuesday, June 3rd. Uh, and the book arrived a week later, the 10th. No prints, of course. None. No, but we do know the make of the typewriter and the manufacturer of the paper. Oh, that's great. It won't really help until we have something to compare it with, though. Uh, what's the condition of Mr. Wood? Well, the most serious injury is a hunk of pipe lodged in his thigh, but he's home recovering. Hey, how about this? FC. Punched into the metal with a nail. Well, he obviously wanted this to survive the blast because he wanted us to have it. FC, fly continental. Fight cholesterol. Please. Flunked chemistry. Uh, now try uh, false clue. <laughs> Something to make us waste our time. He could be echoing George Metesky. Who's George Metesky? He was known as the mad bomber in New York in the 40s, early 50s. And every bomb of his, he had a signature FP. Turned out to stand for fair play. Hmm. Let me tell you what I think is the most significant thing we have. It's this ink. The ink? Yeah, it is green. Why? It's green ink. Do you remember the green smoke on the airplane? And he sends it to Mr. Wood, Forest, Illinois. Return address, it's a fictitious address. He makes up Ravenswood Street. The publisher of the book is Arbor House. Yes, and the bombs made of wood. Have you ever heard the expression? clutching at straws. Well, at least you were right. We're dealing with a serial bomber who seems to be working Chicago. The Bureau suggests that we set up a code name, something we can all key into. Unibomb. Universities and airlines. Put special surveillance on all air mail going in and out of Chicago. Kill him. Well, what are we doing out here in the middle of nowhere? I thought we were going to get back to nature. We're trying to recover our primitive instinct, all right? We're hungry, we got to eat. That animal is food. We kill it. It's all natural. But this isn't natural. What do you want to do? You want to try and outrun a rabbit, choke him with your bare hands, huh? I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> this. This is so primitive. It's not primitive. I got a garden, too. Yeah. I'm living on 50 cents a day, all right? I'm completely self-reliant. I don't depend on one damn person except myself. Now, I don't call that primitive. I call that a kind of purity. You can do it, too. <laughs> you can. Yeah, maybe. But, OK, what about companionship? Well, I can do odd jobs, you know, I take books out of the library, I, I talk no, to folks in town. No, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, you know, falling in love. Are you talking about me? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> you know that saying that uh, civilization is uh, just man's feeble edifice uh, to try and lure a woman's favors. And, you know, I'm not interested in the edifice, and I'm certainly not interested in the favors. So. <laughs> well, I am certainly different than you. That's a fact. <laughs> You're still out there on that paved road that they call progress. And you can't live without your Led Zeppelin. Oh, ouch. That's a low blow. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do all this, but I'm going to do it differently than you, without the killing. What do you mean you're going to do it? This is just a trial run. I want to see what my big brother can teach me about all this. I got my eye on a place out in Texas, out in West Texas. West Texas? Texas. Yep. God, that's great. That's excellent.
planted right up here. Campus police cleared the building and called us. We called the EOD squad. They defused the bomb, nobody got hurt, right here. We figured it was a local freak. I mean, we've had no word on, uh, what did you call him? Unabomber. But the FBI's not going public with that. They're kind of worried about copycats. Think you planted this? Oh, yeah, no question. Carved wood, handmade elements. And just so nobody else gets credit, he includes a nameplate, the initials FC. Every one of his devices is like a self-portrait in code. But why here? School? There must have been a hundred kids passed that day. Apparently, he doesn't care about people. You say he set off another one? Yeah, last week in Tennessee at the University of Vanderbilt. Named a secretary. The package supposedly was sent by a professor at the University of Utah. Of course, it wasn't. But that's how come I'm in the area, you know, nosing around, knocking on doors, asking questions. Look, I understand how the FBI feels about copycats, but if locals like us are in the dark, more bombs might slip by. Oh, you got a good point. The next time, maybe we won't be so lucky. Save you from work and you're playing with model airplanes? Yeah. I, I think it's healthy. At least he's not obsessing on the U word. Well, no, actually, these little beauties may, uh, they may be a key to the Unabomber. Because the latest FBI profile has him as an airline mechanic because of the way he put bombs together. I disagree with it. You disagree? Yeah. I think, I think he made model airplanes. Because in a lot of the bombs, you find pins held together with metal rings like this, see? Yeah. yeah, I see, but uh, so what? Millions of people put model airplanes together when they were kids. It's another part of the picture. There's been nothing since Berkeley, almost three years. Yeah, maybe the guy quit, or he's in prison serving time for some other crime. Maybe he's born again and made a new life for himself. Or blew himself out of the picture. He would never blow himself up. He's too careful. He's too meticulous. And he couldn't be in jail for another crime because he's not a petty criminal. He couldn't be born again because his whole rationale is already evangelistic. Every bomb is a deadly sermon. Against what? Against technology. He hates technology. So it's not over because technology isn't over. He's out there somewhere making these filthy bombs. He's making them meaner. He's making them more deadly. And he's going to kill somebody. He's coming back. I just hope to God that I can find him before he does. Dear Ted, I'm still living in the tent, but I made a start on my dugout. After all the bureaucratic red tape, I finally have clear title to my land. It's very different from your place, Ted but beautiful in its own raw way. It's so quiet. No paved roads. 
I get regular letters from Mother. Dad's health is no better. Write when you can. Always, David. Hi. Buenos dias. Mucho gusto. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I don't speak. Um, lo siento. Uh, Español. Muy poquito. Mejor so. English? Muy poquito. My nombre is Juan Sanchez Ariola. Ah, David Kaczynski. Mucho gusto, David. So, do you live around here? I work in El Rancho. Oh, Rancho Terlingua. Ah. You do this alone? Mm hmm. I help. Um, I only have one shovel. Uno. And, uh, poco dinero. <laughs> no. No, no, no dinero. I help for amistad. To be amigos. Oh. Friends. Whoa, take. Watch your step. <laughs> <laughs> Juan not only helped me finish the digging, but when it came to the roofing, he knew exactly what to do. I told him, mi casa es su casa, and it truly is. Juan's one of those rare people we meet a few times in our lives and bond with immediately. I'm helping him get a green card. I tell Juan about you, and I hope someday you'll meet. It's been a great help to have Juan with me. You say that all we need for survival is Mother Earth and what she provides, but I'm not as self-reliant as you are. Always, David. Dear David, your letters sound more serene. I believe you're finally moving toward the peace that has eluded you. Juan Sanchez must be a very unusual human being. Tell me more about him. If he would care to write me in Spanish, I'd be pleased to hear from him. Well, I'm rereading Joseph Conrad. I feel more at home in his world. Ted. Teodoro, he wants right one? See, si. <laughs> in Spanish, in Espanol. <laughs> Quiero. Ah, looks good. Dear Linda, my makeshift home is finished. It's very primitive, but it'll do until I can build a cabin. When the weather's too bad, my neighbors let me sleep in their bunkhouse. Even though it's nothing like New England here, I think of Thoreau often. I hope this quest for some kind of purity will lead to the peace of mind he wrote about. Yet even when I think I've found it, I find myself thinking of you. I would like to share the good parts of West Texas with you. For always, Henry David Kaczynski. Okay, here we go. You'll be okay now. Uh, 
I need to talk to him, Doctor? I don't think that would be wise. It's important. So is Mr. Hauser's state of mind. Just, it's pretty just, please, important just a to the healing process. Mr. Jeffries, I spent five hours trying to piece together what was left of Mr. Hauser's arm, and I did a damn good job. But you know what? When he tries to use that arm, Mr. Hauser's never going to think I did a good enough job. Why don't we give him a few more days to realize he's lucky to be alive? I don't want anyone else to go through what he just did. They might not be so lucky. Come on. There. In the wheelchair. Here. Give him this. I'll be out there in five minutes. Thank you, Doctor. Captain Hauser? Yeah. Dr. Fisher asked me to give you this. I don't look like a hospital regular. I'm just a lonely postal inspector. Yeah, she mentioned that she might be waiting. Hope everyone's had a chance to read it. All you postal inspectors and 500 FBI agents. I guess it's your turn. Look. The bomber's not going to send me a get well card. I don't know the bastard. How can you be sure? Intuition. Not highly regarded by bureaucratic investigators. You're stereotyping, Captain. I couldn't help but see that your letter's from NASA. Can I ask what it is? I was accepted into the space program. You know, I've been fantasizing about holding this letter in my hand since I saw Neil Armstrong on the moon. 1969. Are you an optimist? You bet. Are you? Hours ago. I know. Jeff is asked to be reassigned. He thinks we're running in place. But that won't get him where he hopes to go. This is the longest letter he's written so far, the one to Dr. O'Connell. Yeah, I've been over and over and over it. The latest profile makes him a blue collar worker, 20 to 30 years old, with no higher education. You can't write a letter like this with a wonder. Percy Wood without the higher education. But the profile argues that the construction of the devices mean he's a manual laborer. Well, that's ridiculous. I mean, listen to this. I'm attempting to shed light on the way in which progress in a particular field of research influences public attitudes toward that field in such a manner as to further accelerate its development, said it. Oh, come on, high school dropout. He sends what's supposed to be a dissertation to a psychology professor. The professor doesn't catch it. His young assistant does. Maybe Mr. Unibom's dissertation was turned down. So he's going to blow up every professor from California to Michigan? Ten bombs. Three of them so far this year. The latest psychological profile also says that he's obsessional, compulsive, and scrupulous about his work. It sounds like you. He probably grew up and was educated somewhere around Chicago in his late 20s. Well, they're wrong on that, not even close. Why do you say that? It's a gut feeling. Hauser called it intuition. He's closer to my age. Ben, Four in Illinois, go. Harbor, Nashville, Auburn, Salt Lake 2, and Berkeley. Where's the next one?
hope Gary gets back before the university people come to get those computers. He should be back any minute. Yeah. Lorraine. What's going on? Oh, there's Gary now. No, we're looking for a white male, 5'10", 165 pounds, reddish blonde hair. There was a red hair found on the Hauser device. Man, you're turning into the Unabom encyclopedia. So now it's computers. First Scruton in Sacramento, now this. You were right, he's back. Yeah, but he's not using the mail anymore. Berkeley, Sacramento, Salt Lake, they've all been hand-placed. But he's putting himself more at risk, which is great. He's trying hard to stay ahead of us, too. We just get the universities to be more security conscious, and he goes after these computer stores. Yeah, there's still a university connection here, though. Majority of computer rentals are the university staff and students. How did Gary Wright survive this? Probably because he kicked it instead of picking it up. It was meant to kill him, though, just like Scrub. Oh, listen, I got a list of possible suspects that have been in the area. You might want to look at it. Well, our agency cleared most of these people five years ago, but you guys go over it again. All right. Why would he risk being seen? Why? After 10 years, we've got his face. 12 bombings. What do we really know? Well, we know he's real smart. Maybe even a genius type, and that he enjoys setting traps for people, taking advantage of normal human curiosity. You see something out of place, you pick it up. A binder and a computer lab, or a sack in a parking lot, or even a hunk of wood with nails sticking out of it. Most likely, he lives alone. And he must put all his time into planning and building these devices. He definitely lives alone. Because? because he doesn't like other people. You got everything? Yeah. You sure you got a big enough lock? I can still see part of the door. <laughs> well, this isn't exactly a vacation camp around here. There was snowmobiles last winter coming all through this property. I bet you love that. Um, sorry about this. breaking the saw. I'll send you a new one as soon as I get some money. Don't worry about it. I'm just glad you didn't hurt yourself. You're the only brother I got. <laughs> you gonna go through with this thing with, uh, Linda? <laughs> I'm different from you, Ted. I like to be around people. I want a family. Let's go get the bus. Well, it's good to see you again, but uh, sorry I couldn't help you. Sorry, too. <laughs> but I've just got to keep looking. You know, if there's no fresh leads, I go back over the old ones, hoping. Right. Doesn't it bother you to work in this room? Yeah, a little, when I first got back to Berkeley. Just don't pick up any unidentified objects. Yeah, really. So, uh, right here, we'll have the dining room. And right here, we'll have the living room. It's kind of one room. Big window right here. Oh, wait a minute. Here, look at this. Look at this. This is what we look at every night when we climb into bed. Oh, that's so nice. That's not what I'll be looking at. As long as you're beside me. Linda, 
You're not supposed to do that. You're the bride. Come on. This isn't exactly a traditional wedding. Oh, that's why it's so lovely. I wouldn't have missed it for the world. Oh, Susan, you're not patronizing me, are you? Me? I even like the cake. <laughs> that was David's idea. Didn't exactly turn out. Susan is the first one who liked your cake. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, admiring your sense of adventure. <laughs> Most of the folks around here won't even taste it. Actually, I only had a bite. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness we ordered one. Hey, if I had a campfire, it would have been better. Oh, by the way, where's Ted? I'm dying to hear about the wilds of Montana. Ted's not here. Excuse me, I gotta rescue Ma. Ted didn't come? They had an argument. Ted won't even answer a letter. What's it over? Me. He doesn't approve of the marriage. Women are manipulators. And Ted isn't? I know. David is still disappointed. How you doing? If you can spare a few minutes from your new executive responsibilities, yes. Easy, Ben. Yes, uh, what the hell happened here? We needed more space. The Blue Canyon mail fraud's getting bigger and bigger. I had to assign What about the Unabomber? Nothing new, Ben. No, there's been nothing for years. You know those women in Salt Lake City, they saw him. He probably got scared. He's in a mental hospital or dead, all right? Jeff, you all buried him before. It's over, Ben, finished. Means I'm finished. Jeff, help me get an extension. Will you don't let them push me out? Ben, nobody's pushing you out. This is a system. It's how it works. You've worked hard for 30 years. It's time to retire. Besides, in 200 years of the service, no one has ever gotten an extension. How could I retire when he's still out there? Forget him. Forget it all. Okay, go golfing. Look, it's no concern of yours anymore. It's never been just a concern for me, Jeff. All these years on the job, I've wanted to help people and protect people. We do our job right, and the mail is safe, and no one needs to be afraid. Nobody is afraid of the Unabomber anymore. He's gonna come back. He's go... He... Don't let me keep you. Look, Ben, I'm sorry you feel that way. Okay, I really wish you could put it behind you and have a wonderful retirement, all right? Right now, we want to establish our identity and provide an identifying number that will ensure the authenticity of future communications from us. Keep this number secret so that no one else can pretend to speak in our name. 
Ben was right, he is back. Catch anything? Hey, Harrington, how you doing? What, they retire you too? Yeah, soon, I hope. I got another rod and reel in the car. Well, I didn't come here to fish, Ben. Besides, your wife says this is the first time you've been out here in months. I love that woman, but she talks too much. Guess you heard the Unabomber's back. Yeah, I, I seem to have heard a rumor to that effect. Of course, I never thought he went away. Well, the Bureau and all of your crowd, the ATF, they're putting together this task force. Attorney General's authorized it. Why tell me? Everybody wants you to be a part of this, Ben. Oh, that's too bad. In the 200 years of the Postal Service, no employee has ever received an extension. Really? Well, I'm afraid that's all taken care of. Our director, Mr. Free, wrote a letter. I'm impressed. Good, because you'll be senior man on the team. So, gonna waste a lot of time playing hard to get? What's the latest on the victims? You know, they'll live. Pretty serious injuries, though. Universities are panicked. Well, he's sending letters now. That's promising. Maybe he wants to get better acquainted. Yeah, you could be right. Another bombing. This time a professor at Yale. Oh, it's so terrible. Wasn't there one about a day or two ago in San Francisco? Uh, I worry about these bombs and you. Why would he go after an associate professor of philosophy at Union College? Who knows? A wacko. You want some tea? No, oh, love some. I use a computer, and he seems to have a big thing about that. A lot of people that are unhappy about living in the computer age. <laughs> Including you. But you're not going to blow someone up because she's computer friendly. Well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I won't open any packages. It's a deal. You know. The first one was at Northwestern, just before I got my degree there. Man, seems like this thing's been going on forever. Do you think it's just a coincidence? FC happens to pick a nine-digit number, and it turns out to be the social security number of some guy who's been in and out of jail. Yeah, I can't figure out what's going on here, because this guy was definitely in jail when the bombs were sent. So it's strange. But FC loves to play games. Yeah, like the first note, woo, it works. <laughs> it turned out there's 10,000 people named woo. Another dead end. Well, this time, let's be positive. Is that your social security number? Beats me. Hey, you could be in a bunch of trouble, buddy. This is not about some petty drug charge. Someone's trying to front you for murder. I didn't kill no one. Well, it seems someone is saying you did. Hold on, man. I'm trying to think. Uh, I mean, I haven't had a job or nothing since I don't, I don't know when. Long time. Well, where's your card? Your Social Security card? That must be hell. It was in my wallet when I lost it. Oh, you lost it? Where? When? Downtown Sacramento bus station uh, before summer. Or nothing, so I forgot about it. Both people alert on Epstein bombs were postmarked Sacramento. I think I know who found your wallet. Okay. Come on. And wait. Wait a minute. What's that on your neck? My tattoo. <laughs> okay, let's go. Didn't find his wallet. He stole it. <laughs> 
As always, the Christmas rush is going to be hectic. But this Unabomber case demands extra vigilance. Now, many times in my career, I've gotten a call from someone that says, I've got this package, feels extra heavy. It looks weird, funny writing, misspelled letters. Uh, it's got oil, it smells funny. It's got wire sticking out of it. Well, you know, I mean, you're familiar with this. You've got it posted on the wall over there. That's the look of a standard mail bomb. And of course, I want you to remain alert for those. But the Unabomber has a completely different MO. <clears throat> We've done up a mock-up here we put together for you. Could you pass that around, please? Everybody look at it very carefully. You'll see that the Unabomber's packages are meticulous. They're carefully wrapped. Keep an eye out for Eugene O'Neill stamps. He tends to use those. Now, don't expect him to come in and, and hand you a package. He won't do that. He's a coward, and he won't confront you or his victims. The mail is our national form of communication, and no one should be afraid to open his mail. But this guy, this coward, is undermining the public trust in the U.S. Postal Service. And I, for one, resent it. He's got to be stopped. And we could do it with the help of each and every one of you. Thank you. Have a good Christmas. So I taped it, and now I'm taping this. Oh, how clever of you. <laughs> Happy birthday, sweetie. I'm sorry I was late. Well, we saved you some cake. Mm. And we saved you some kisses. Mm. Well, listen, I haven't slept in like 23 hours. So it's like 6 o'clock London time. Well, speaking of sleeping, that's what you need to be doing, little Miss Birthday Girl. Mm -hmm. Well, give me another hug. <laughs> and see you in the morning. Good night, honey. Wait a minute. <laughs> I really missed you. I missed you too. What a little uh, cake. Well, I'll go check on her. Then I'll be back. Okay. okay. I'll look at the mail. offering the land and cabin as security. We sent him $1,000 just before Christmas. And here, three months later, he's asking for $2,000 more. No, well, he wants to protect himself by buying the land around him. Investment. You know, you did the same thing in Texas. Oh, look, honey, if you feel like we can't afford to send him the money, then... No, oh, we can afford it. That's not the point. I'm just wondering where it's all going. Ted used to live on 200 bucks a year. Let's just send in the money. Linda. Oh, don't say anything more about it. I don't want to talk about money. Honey, do you think that Ted is ever going to get a job? Maybe go back to teaching? Oh, I don't think so. Well, that Harvard education wasted just because he doesn't want to compromise with the system. Oh, yeah, but somehow it's not a compromise to use our money. He's your brother. All right. Send him the money. You still like me? Do that, Mr. Taylor. Oh, you know me. Usual junk. Oh. 
Oh, this one's heavy. It's addressed to William Dennison, president of the Timber Association. Bill left a year ago. Yeah, we changed the name to Forestry Association years before that. Hi, guys. Hi. What is this, a convention? <laughs> this package, it's addressed to Bill Dennison. Whoa, heavy. Must be a bomb. Oh, it is heavy. Lisa, you shouldn't be lifting this in your condition. My condition is A-OK. -okay. Timber Association. Boy, that goes back. Oh, well, who's it from? Closet Dimensions, Oakland, California. You know, I have Mr. Dennison's address. I'll go get it for you. Now, Lisa, listen, that's OK. I'll just open it up in my office. Turns out to be important. We'll send it on to Bill, OK? OK. Well, I'm out of here before that bomb goes off. Oh, don't joke about that. Oh. <laughs> Since we no longer have to confine the explosive in a pipe, we're now free of the limitations on the size and shape of our bombs. So we expect to be able to pack deadly bombs into ever smaller, lighter, and more harmless looking packages. Clearly, we are in a position to do a great deal of damage. You refer and it doesn't appear that the FBI is going to catch us anytime soon. The FBI is a joke. Anyhow, we're getting tired of making bombs. It's no fun having to spend all of our evenings and weekends preparing dangerous mixtures, filing trigger mechanisms out of scraps of metal. No fun? The FBI has tried to portray these bombings as the work of an isolated nut. We won't waste our time arguing about whether we are nuts, but we certainly are not isolated. Ben, do you really think there's an organization? No. No, he's by himself. And the more he writes about this Freedom Club, the more I'm convinced that he's just making it up. He's alone. Then he makes his offer. The Washington Post and the New York Times will publish his article. He'll stop the bombings. He says he won't kill any more people, <laughs> but he reserves the right to go on destroying property. If the answer is satisfactory, we will finish typing the manuscript and send it to you. If the answer is unsatisfactory, we will start building our next bomb. Listen, this is, this is the letter he wrote to Dr. Gerlinger. This is vicious. People with advanced degrees aren't as smart as they think they are. If you'd had any brains, you would have realized that there are a lot of people out there who resent bitterly the way you techno-nerds like you are changing the world, and you wouldn't have been dumb enough to open an unexpected package from an unknown source. Now, he's mocking a man that lost part of his right hand, the hearing in one ear, and the vision in one eye. Yes, Jeffries. When did, when did this come in? Uh, what are the numbers? Okay, fax that over right away, will you? The Unabomb sent a message to the Chronicle. He's threatening to blow up an airliner out of L.A. in six days. And the numbers are right. It's legit. Los Angeles International Airport is on full alert with security measures not seen since the Gulf War. The Unabomber's threat is forcing real changes in security by both local and federal authorities. Because the Unabomber sends bombs through the U.S. mail, his threat has stopped airport mail delivery halting three to four million pieces of mail that normally move through LAX daily. After 17 years of searching and a million dollar reward, the FBI still has no suspect. Ben, hey, what's going on? Well, one of the cabinet attendants found what she thinks is a bomb in the luggage bay there. Everyone's already been evacuated. Where are the explosives? They hear you? No, not yet. We're waiting for them. I'm going to take a look. Ben, wait a second. Ben! you 
guys, he has a signature. That's not handmade, that's a transistor radio. That's technology, that's the stuff he hates. He would never disguise a bomb like that. You think he's close by, watching us, having a good laugh? He could be, and this scare could just be to divert our attention from his real target. So we're still in the hunt. Afraid so. Sorry I'm late. Oh, that's okay. I was just finishing up some work. You all right? I was listening to the radio down in the parking lot. The Unabomber says he's gonna blow up a plane at LAX. Apparently it's pandemonium over there. Oh, that's terrible. You know, there was an article about him with the psychological profile and all the bombs that they think were his, and I, I got this eerie feeling. What do you mean? It seems so far-fetched, but it, it seems that Ted was in all the same places. What are you talking about? You, you, you don't mean that... Of course not. It, it's just this feeling. You know how strange his letters are. Oh, what am I talking about? Ted's never been to Utah. What is it? He was. It was in Salt Lake City. Is it, it's probably just a coincidence. Well, of course it is. I mean, the timeline is all wrong. He was in Berkeley in the 60s. He was in Salt Lake City in the 70s. Besides, he doesn't fit the profile. He's a younger guy. David, you've been thinking about it too, haven't you? Hi, hon. Hey. What have you got there? It's a letter from Juan. Mm -hmm. Everything okay? I don't know how he is. What's this? It's beautiful. Montani Semper Liberi. Mountain men are always free. Did Juan make this? No, Ted did. Ted? I thought you said the letter was from Juan. It is, but he sent this and a letter that Ted wrote to him. He knows we're not speaking, so I guess he just wanted to fill me in on a little news. Mm, how thoughtful of Juan. You don't seem very pleased. He's telling Juan that he can't come for a visit because he has no money. But we just sent him... $3,000. Doesn't make any sense. No. What's really bothering you? These articles about the Unabomber talk about fine woodwork. The bombs? You mean you think this too means? I don't know what it really means. I just worry about what it might mean. They have to publish this manifesto. Hey, you ought to be over at the Justice Department with the big boy. Well, the minute the thing came in, I said, it's just a matter of time. This has got the guy's fingerprints all over. I heard there was no transferable prints, though. No, no, no. no. I don't mean literally. Oh. I mean a turn of phrase or, okay. you know, a favorite word in misspelling. They're talking about maybe publishing part of it. <clears throat> no, no, no. It's no good. I got to publish the whole thing. Who's going to edit it? They could blue pencil the very section that could identify the guy. You know, this reminds me of the Mad Bomber. Who's that? George Metesky was his name. He scared the hell out of New York for years. Then they ran some stories in the newspapers to try and provoke him. It worked, he rose to the bait. Then he started writing letters himself, back, letter after letter. Finally, somebody picked up on this uh, pet phrase you like. Yeah, it was, it was uh, dastardly deeds, I'll never forget <laughs> it. Well, that's an unusual phrase. So they started checking and they nailed it. But I thought there was a blanket rule, no concessions to terrorists. Yeah, but this is an exception, 37,000 words. I mean, come on, folks. Somebody's going to pick up on an attitude, a uh, pet word or something. A phrase. They're going to say, yeah, God, that, that sounds like my Uncle Herb or my cousin Jack or boyfriend. But if it is Uncle Herb, a boyfriend, somebody really close, would the person turn him in? You know, for a lot of people, they've been an informant as about as low as you can get. Well, maybe we'll get really lucky and this person will have a conscience.
Hey, Gary. Hi. Got a minute? The bomb? The postal oh. department? Yeah, hey, that's right, yeah. Ben Jeffers, you got a hell of a nerve. <laughs> hey, um, I'm just doing follow-ups, you know? I'm trying to get the reaction of victims to that manifesto. Did you read it? Yeah, I read a lot of it. Got put in my place as part of the unthinking majority. Oh, yeah. Well, you can save a place for me there, too. No, I just don't get it. I mean, we, we had to close up shop, but I don't understand how one small computer store matters, except to me and my family. Yeah, well, the guy's sick, you know. But look, was there anything that you read there in the manifesto that you could tie to somebody you knew? No. I wish there was. My wife, she was so sure that uh, the bombing was personal, you know, that he'd come back, kill the kids, her. She suffered a lot more than I did. Yeah, I'll bet. Still working computers? <laughs> you bet I am. One way to give old Unabomber the finger. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> Ted's letters. It is strange. And there's this. Look at this phrase. You can't eat your cake and have it too. It's you can't have your cake and eat it too. But Mom always said it this way. Honey, it could be a coincidence. I hope it is. There's this. You know, Ted's always complaining about being cheated out of his childhood. And this jumps out at me. The system needs scientists, mathematicians, and engineers. It can't function without them, so heavy pressure is put on children to excel in these fields. He was reading Scientific American when the other kids were collecting Superman comics. I don't know what to do. If you're sure. No, but I'm not. I don't have any evidence. It's two letters. What are you going to do? Uh, I'm going to write Ted a letter. And, and, and tell him our suspicions? Oh, no. <laughs> I'll just ask him if I can come to Montana and see him. Why don't you just go? Oh, I can't just show up on his doorstep without any warning. No, I'll... Write him that I feel bad about losing touch and ask if we can get together. God, Linda, I just, I don't know what to do. I don't want to know, but I have to know. Dear Ted, after this long period of estrangement, I feel the need to come to Montana for a visit. Whatever our disagreements have been in the past, I would like to put them aside. I know you disapprove of the life I live here with Linda, but it's the right life for me. Living alone in the wilderness just wasn't enough. As brothers, we should try to support and understand each other. Please let me know when would be a good time to come. David. So there he sits. And this is maybe the world's greatest authority on the criminal mind. He's studied the manifesto forwards, backwards. He knows it almost as well as I do. I doubt that. It, well, I said almost. So, he gives me his profile of the Unabomber. He is male, 40 to 60, college educated, raised in a strong religious environment, unhappy with his lack of social success, untrusting of his government, and suffering from feelings of being lost in some modern techno world. Sexually unfulfilled, territorial, and fearful of what the future holds. I say, Doc, thanks a lot. You narrowed it down for me. You gave me a description of about 20 million people in this country. Uh, I don't believe it. You know, Ben, I think I need your help. Why, what's wrong? Where can I buy some good fly fishing equipment? 
What are you giving up? No, but I'm wearing down. This manifesto was supposed to lead us to the bomber. It's been four months since we published it. Yeah, there's been other leads. A bunch of dead ends. The most important thing in this business is patience. <laughs> well, nobody's got more than you, that's for sure. Okay. Remember this, my broomstick? This is what I want you to remember about the principle of feedback. Now, my goal here is to balance this broomstick on my hand. The laws of physics say no, that's not possible. But if the eyes observe, and that special part of the brain supplies feedback to the arm and body, balancing the broomstick becomes a possibility. OK? Think about that. See you Friday. Doug Hauser. Inspector Jeffries. You, oh, yeah. You do keep popping back into my life. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry about that. Listen, uh, we mailed you a copy of the Unabomber's manifesto about a week ago. Mm -hmm. Still hot on his trail, huh? Oh, yeah. Me and about 100 other people. Yeah, I read the manifesto. Oh, good. I'm glad you read it. Of course, we're hoping that something in there might have triggered a memory. I really don't think I knew this guy or that he knew me. I was a random victim. He reached out with his dirty little bomb, hoping to destroy a life. One way or another, take control of someone else. Now, I'm not John Howe's a random Unabomber victim. I'm a teacher, a researcher, living my own life. I really look back very seldom. I think he succeeded more with you. In taking over my life? Huh. Cardiologist said that just a little while ago. Cardiologist? Yeah, I had a 90% occlusion. He said I had to retire. Take over your health the way this case has taken over you, is what he said. But here you are. Yeah, damn right. Dear David, I find your request for a visit badly timed and very upsetting. I advised you of my heart problems, and even the thought of your coming here has set my heart racing. Now, please abandon this foolish idea at once. There's absolutely no reason for us to meet at this time. Susan, it's David Kaczynski. Could you please give me a call? It's urgent. Linda and I feel that we may have some evidence that a certain person committed some serious crimes. Have you been to the police? Well, before we go to them, we want to Make sure we're not accusing someone who's innocent. All right. We want to work through you so we can remain anonymous. I can do that if you think it's necessary. We think this person might be the Unabomber. We, we want to keep this very, very confidential. I mean, odds are we're wrong. This person will probably be proven to be innocent. We don't want this person to get hurt. Of course not. What do you want me to do? Well, if you could find someone who could analyze some letters. In our own amateur way, we found similarities with the manifesto. Sure. There are some experts I can recommend. OK. I'll get on this right away. Good. Thanks, Susan. Professor, I think your flowers are just beautiful. Thank you. I've always liked working in the garden. When I was teaching, there weren't enough hours in the day. You retired now? Yes. This little place is one of my priorities now. Uh, we sent out a copy of the manifesto to all the victims, yourself included. Did you get it and read it? Yes. Tedious. It reads like many undergraduate term papers, warmed over ideas, served up in such bloated and pretentious language. And then those footnotes. 
I'm sorry, I'd like to help. But there was no way that man would know I was going to pick up the bomb. True. But I have to explore all the possibilities. You are persistent. After 16 years of knocking and talking. Sometimes I think it would be better if we would just ignore this person. I couldn't do that. No, you couldn't. But I hope you succeed. Susan. Linda said I could find you here. Well, it's not good news. If it's good news, you could have told me over the phone. The letters have been examined independently by two sets of highly regarded experts. Odds are four to five the same person wrote the letters and the manifesto. Four out of five. 80%. If you were one of us, I mean, what would you do? David, I'm not you. It's up to each person to deal with his own conscience in his own way. friend, Tony Basegli. No names, that was at Tony's insistence. This guy has connections with the FBI. He can handle this for you. He can get you the kind of protection that you want. Here's his phone number. Don't give him your name, just say Susan's friend. I am so sorry. Hi, I'm Tony Biscayley. Are you Susan's friend? The man I've been speaking with on the phone? Yeah. Come on in. Thank you. Yeah, Susan just gave me your address. I know I first advised you not to reveal your identity to me, but I think we should. Uh... It's not me I'm trying to protect. I'm David Kaczynski. And are these your friend's letters? The ones that might match part of the manifesto? Actually, it's my brother. These are my brother's letters. I'm sorry. You think your brother might? I don't know. That's why I called Susan. That's, that's why I'm trying to be so careful about all this. Enough innocent people have been hurt already. I don't want to add my brother to the list. If he is innocent. But you have your doubts. There's so many parallels. There's so many. I need something concrete before I can, before I can believe this. And I don't know if I ever will. I understand. You said that you know someone that could analyze these? Yes, he um, he's not part of the task force. I think we all agree that we need to be as careful as we can be before approaching them. Yeah. I respect you for what you're doing, David.
why the somber face? They printed it all just like you wanted. Yeah, I know. It's only a matter of time before someone makes a connection. I'm sure you're right. Are you jealous somebody else is going to identify him? No. No, I'm not exactly jealous. I do see the irony, though. There's been times when all I wanted to do was just get my hands around his neck. Uh, now, I, I don't care who pulls him in, just as long as somebody puts a pair of handcuffs on him. They will. And they'll have you to thank. Come on. I'll buy you an ice cream. Okay. to do. What does Mr. Pesegli say? He's left it up to me. Yeah, hi. Bennett Tarrington. <clears throat> oh, what's up? Bringing in somebody who says he's the guy's brother. You think it's for real? Well, we don't have any ID because it's through a wall of attorneys, but this time there's evidence. Be there 10 a.m. permission I can handle this whole thing you know I have to do this myself Gentlemen, this is David Kaczynski. All right, David. My brother, Theodore Kaczynski, wrote the letters that you've read. He lives in a cabin outside Lincoln, Montana. Okay, Ben. Yeah, go. Okay, we're coming down. Copy. Anybody in there? This is the Forestry Service. We're doing a line survey. We think this property might be on National Forest land.
get my coat. We're federal law enforcement officers. Am I under arrest? No, you're not. Am I free to go? No. This is a warrant to search your cabin. I want my attorney. And before I permit this search, I have the right to read that warrant. It's 170 pages. I have plenty of time. I don't. Is it safe to go in that cabin? I won't answer that question. All right, explosives. Carefully, very carefully. 